What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant and I am the author of The Wealth Journey and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. Today I'm going to give you five important habits of financially stable people. You hear a lot of people, young and old, say things like, I just want to be financially stable. I just want to have my finances together. I just want to go to sleep and not have to worry about my finances, about my debt, about my savings. And I'm here to help you with that. I do have other videos about being financially stable, but I think this will help solidify a lot of those videos because this is gonna have the underlying habits that live underneath that of what a financially stable person does every single day. This is embedded in their minds and what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're gonna get right into this. I'm not gonna waste any time. So the first habit of any financially stable person is they map out their personal finances. So the thing I want y'all to understand is being financially stable does not mean you're where you wanna be. It just means that you're financially stable. That is a literal stage in your personal finances. And what I wanna stress in this video is that's not the end goal. That's actually one of the first goals to aim for. And a lot of people don't get there or it takes them a really long time. What I'm trying to help you do is shorten that gap of time. Because as long as you make the right decisions consistently over a course of time, you're gonna to get to your goal a lot faster than if you didn't. So what does it look like to plan out your personal finances? What it looks like is, let's say you have a plan to increase your salary, is taking a piece of paper down or even writing in your notes app on your phone like I used to do, and just say, you know what? This is how much I'm making this year. Like, let's say I'm making 50K this year. I wanna be making 80K in three to four years. So what does that look like? What does that progression look like? Does that look like I'm gonna take promotions at work? Does it mean I'm gonna just work a lot of overtime? Does it look like having a side hustle or a side business on the side? Like what does that really look like to you? What does future you look like making that kind of money? And then also be realistic. Like think about how many hours am I gonna work in the future to get that type of money? Or let's say your savings right now is $5,000 and you wanna get it up to $10,000. Okay, well, what does that look like? How much money are you able to save this month? And then how much money do you wanna be able to save in the future? What does that gap look like? You may be in debt and you may wanna pay off your credit card that has $2,800 on it. Cool, how long is that gonna take? And what does it realistically look like for me getting there? Am I gonna have to cut back on expenses for a few months before I can pay that off? Do I need to work some days of overtime to pay that off? Like, that's what I'm talking about. You wanna map out what your future state looks like. Because a lot of us, we know we have problems. We know we have debt. We know we want our savings to get bigger. But a lot of us aren't doing a lot of things about it because we're living in everyday life and we're like, you know what? I deserve a break today. You know what, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go out to eat. I'm gonna get me something good to eat. I'm gonna go get some Uber Eats because why not? I don't feel like, you know what I'm saying, getting up and driving nowhere. I don't feel like going to the restaurant. I don't feel like going grocery shopping. So now I'm gonna pay a slight premium just so I can get that conveniently brought over to me. You know what, I need a drink. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the bar tonight. You get what I'm saying? And not that anything is wrong with these individual actions alone, but when you get caught up in the minutia of every day, like you really don't think about how these financial decisions can actually be hurting you towards your goals. But when you have a clear direction on what your financial goals are, what you wanna do with your money, you're gonna be on cloud nine because you're gonna have a solid plan. You're gonna know exactly what you're doing. And you're gonna know exactly what you can spend every month and still hit your goal. So it's not that you should not do these things at all, but it's you should be controlled in how you do it and you should do so moderately and you should track your expenses while you're doing it. And then you'll be ahead. You'll always be ahead on your expenses when you do stuff like that. So if you haven't done so, map it out. And what else is mapping out your finances look like? It looks like taking time every month and just looking at your budget, look at how you're doing, how is your spending? Like, is your spending actually matching up to your budget? Do you even have a budget? If not, cool, it's no judgment. I didn't used to have a budget. But at some point, something's got to give. You got to say, you know what? I need to plan out my finances better. What system works best for me? Is it the 50-30-20 rule? Is it the zero budgeting method? I have videos on both of those. And I think I need to make a new video on the zero-based budgeting method. But um, my point is, you have to have some sort of system that works for you. And you need to map it out. So that's the first step, that's the first habit of a financially stable person because the only way you can continuously make financially stable decisions is knowing where you're going. I didn't mean to rhyme, but you know, that was kind of dope. Because if you don't know where you're going, how are you gonna know if you're going forward or backwards? How do you know if you're going up or down? You don't because you don't know where you're going. So figure that out and you 
will improve your personal finances almost instantly. The second thing is financially stable people make sacrifices only they don't look at it as sacrifices. They look at it, you know what? Right now, I'm going to take a step back on this so in the future, I can have this type of reward. What do I mean by that? I mean, you might want to go to a party. You might want to go to a concert. You might want to go fly out to Florida and go on vacation with your friends. But it might be better for you financially to, you know what? I'm going to sit this one out, guys. Y'all have fun. I'm not going with y'all tonight. I'm not going with y'all to Vegas. I'm not going with y'all to Florida. Or it doesn't even have to be completely not going to somewhere, but it could be, you know, if you have a choice between first class, comfort, and economy, you might choose economy on a flight because you're like, hey, it's better for my pockets right now. Yeah, I can afford the other two, but I don't have to. I can use that money for something else. If you're someone who drinks, you can be like, you know, I don't got to go to a bar because as we know, bars are a lot more expensive than just getting individual drinks from the store. You get what I'm saying? And I don't drink, but I know a lot of people do. So I'm just using that example. Sacrifices are stuff, simple stuff like, you know what? I really like eating out, but instead of eating out as much as I usually do, which is like four times a week, I'm going to cut that down to four times a month. And what I'm going to do in, the, in between I'm going to get good at cooking. I'm going to get real good at seasoning my foods. It's going to be Chef Bryant up in here. You know what I'm saying? That's how I had to think about it when I first got started. I needed to be like, you know what? I got to start cooking more. And you'll be surprised at how much money you can save like per meal when you cook at home more. I'm not saying that every meal you have has to be at home. But what I am saying is it'll save you a lot of money if you just cook more meals at home. That's just that's just a fact. Like no one can really argue with that. The numbers back it up. Like right now, if I hit up one of my favorite restaurants, it'll be it'll run me $15 for like a, a basic grilled chicken sandwich. It's real good. It has real good seasoning, but it's 15 bucks for a sandwich. I can go to the store right now and buy a bunch of chicken and it could last me a week for $15. So one meal for $15 versus a week worth a chicken for $15. You get what I'm saying? And prices may vary and stuff, but that's the stuff that I'm talking about. I just threw some numbers out there, so don't quote me to any specific chicken prices. I don't want to hear nobody in the comments talking about some, well, actually, chicken, uh, we ain't doing that today. You, you get the point. What else does a financially stable person do? They live below their means. We're going to talk about this today. I'm, I even need to make a whole video about this, but I'm just going to quickly go over what I mean. That means if you live below your means, you're not over here maxing out your salary. You know how you max out your credit cards? We ain't talking about that today. We're talking about maxing out your salary. That means you make 50K, you make 60K, you make 70K. Well, I'm going to spend all of it on my bills. I'm going to have a nice apartment. I'm going to have a nice car. I'm going to have all these nice things that I'm overpaying for. When you live below your means... You understand, hey, I know I can I know I can afford it. I know I can buy it, but my money's going somewhere else. I'm living below my means right now, so I can have an incredible future that a lot of people don't even have. When you live below your means, that's saying, you know what? I mean, it's it's all good. Like I don't really need all these other things. Cause you really don't. You really don't. A lot of people don't really understand how good they have it, and they just think, I'm going to upgrade this. Okay, I have a sedan. I'm going to go to an SUV. I'm going to go to a truck. They think I have a one-bedroom apartment? Nah, we're moving to three bedrooms. Like We need to understand how to get good at being content with what we have and understanding really how blessed we are. Am I saying never upgrade? Absolutely not. But what I am saying is definitely don't upgrade everything at the same time. Like That's just asking yourself to be in a situation where you're where you're going, where you're getting behind financially. You don't want to fall behind because of your own issues. If you, if you fall behind, oh, I can see if it's because of something that's out of your control, like inflation going up like crazy. I can see stuff like that. But that's why you map out your finances. But what I can't explain, what I can't understand is when we do it to ourselves. That's why I made my video about lifestyle creep. Go check that out. Live below your means. And that's just basically, we're not going to overspend. We're going to spend less than what we make and it sounds so simple but a lot of us don't do it because you know nowadays with these cards just swipe 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 you don't feel nothing you don't feel that money leaving until you look one day talking about some how do i only got five dollars in my account really you don't know you don't remember all that swiping you did i just want you to be mindful about that stuff because it can catch up to you real quick and a lot of transactions nowadays on your card get delayed, so you don't even see it leave your bank account right away. It might say pending, and it might be like two days from now, and then it leaves your bank account. 
and then you don't remember two days ago you done bought something and then you're wondering how 30 extra dollars are missing from your account like you really got to be careful and just track your expenses but yeah mm -hmm. live below your means and my favorite thing that financially stable people do and this is number four by the way so we still got one more to go but my favorite thing that financially stable people do is they're always looking to improve their finances. This is the stuff that takes you from being financially stable to financially independent, financially secure, financially free. And what that looks like is after you look at your budget every month, okay, how can I tweak this to make this a little better? How can I improve this? How can I make my savings get even bigger? And then after that is reading books and understanding how money really works and understanding how, you know, you can get better with not having to pay as much taxes. You start to understand how you can make your money grow for you on the side. You understand how your retirement account works at work. You understand what other options you might have outside of work. You're like, you, you know what? I, I actually have even extra money besides what I'm putting in my retirement and besides what I'm putting in my savings every month. I'm debt free now. You know what I'm saying? Like now I can think about where else can I put my money and make it grow for me and be in a tax advantage account. Or even if it's not tax advantage, like what other places can I put my money in and, and let it grow? 10% per year, 13% per year, over a 30 year period. How can I make my thousands grow into millions? When you start asking yourself these types of questions, you're constantly getting better. You're constantly improving. And I have something very special coming up that's going to help people understand exactly where they can put their money and understand what their options truly are and understand how anyone can become a millionaire. I have something very special coming up, so stay tuned for that. And as a matter of fact, if that interests you, go ahead and hit the link in the description. It's the 30-minute session where you actually get to sit down with me and talk about what you would want to see in a project that contains information like that and what it looks like to have a personal finance type of vibe. This is going to be a course, by the way, and I am actually working on that. And I'm extremely excited about it. I'm going to really go full force on it once I complete my audio book. Shout out to my book. If you haven't checked it out, link up here. Go ahead and click on it and see what's up with it. It's a really good book. It's going to help you out. It's going to help you become financially stable. It's going to help you become financially secure. And it can help you become financially free. Just apply what's in the book and you can get there. But yeah, that's how you improve. Like you read books, you understand what you can do differently. You understand different perspectives. That's how you do it. And lastly, a financially stable person focuses on getting things the right way. And what I mean by that is simply... If you have the money for something and you want something, you make the decision to buy it or not. Like you're not saying, you know what? I really wish I had $1,500 for that luxury item, for that Gucci shirt, for those Prada shoes. I know, I know y'all got expensive taste. It's all right. It's all good. I do too. But there's a difference between a person who has the $1,500 for it and someone who is trying to look rich and swipe a credit card that they know they can't pay off until at least four to six months. Now you're taking a step back because now you're not just paying off the credit, you're paying off the interest too because it's definitely going to gain interest on what you don't pay off. And the credit card interest is something like 17% average. For me, that doesn't make financial sense, so I'm not doing that. And that's something a financially stable person would do. They're going to be like, no, nah, I'm going to take a step back on that. When I get the 15, that's when I'll buy it. And even then, they know enough to say, you know, I'm smart financially, so if I can't buy two, three, four of these, I don't got no business buying one of these. Because that means I have zero dollars left. That's how I want you to think. That's financially stable thinking. If they want to save, they do it the right way. They don't put money they don't have into their savings only to reach back into their savings and put it back in their checking so they can afford to live. That is financially stable thinking because you're like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and have this amount of money go into my savings account because I know I can I can afford to do that. And then if, if I could do a little more, I'll do more next month. But I'm not going to put all this money in there so I can look like I got a savings only to reach back in and take half of it out of my savings and, and put it into my checking so I can afford to live. That's someone who's thinking ahead. That's someone who's like, I'm not going to bite off more than I can chew. I'm going to do exactly what I can do. And if I can do more next month, I'll do more next month and keep adding to it until you feel comfortable. A financially stable person invests the right way. They, they say, you know what? If I can do 100 a month, I'll do 100 a month. And I'll work my way up to 500. I'll work my way up to 1,000. But I am not going to put money that I absolutely need into an investment on the off chance that it might jump up to the upside and I can profit off of it tomorrow. That's not how investing works. Don't worry, I got my investment videos coming up. Even though like two of y'all watch it, it's still valuable to me and I enjoy making that content. So it's, it's coming up. Trust me, it's coming. I just want y'all to actually click the video and watch it, but it's coming. It, it can, that's how y'all look. That is how people become millionaires investing 
It's so simple. And people are so scared right now to invest because the stock market's down, but that is the best time to invest. I'm not even gonna get into all of that. And the last thing about focusing on getting things the right way, when you get things, you really have to think about who are you getting them for? Are you getting them for yourself? Because they make you happy? Because it's what you want? Because it's what you like? Or is it because of what other people think? Because if you're buying things for yourself, just because you think it'll impress other people, I'm sorry, but that's pathetic. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Because not only are you maybe impressing someone or maybe not impressing someone, but what you're also doing is you're spending money on something that you wouldn't have otherwise spent your money on just to get a reaction out of somebody. Please don't do that, know your worth. But that's my message for you today. That's my video for you today. Hopefully you liked it as much as I enjoyed making it. But that is a video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.